So once again, we're just building up the colors. So at the moment I'm using Van Dyke Brown, which works quite well with this. <coughs> I've used a bit of Caput Morton here, <coughs> which is a bit too red. So I can tone that down a bit using the Van Dyke Brown. You really just need to learn how to use the different colours and sort of in order to get the effect that you're wanting. So we're just working on the uh, neck of the stallion now. <coughs> so although it's a chestnut stallion, we've used lots and lots of different colours to get this colour. So I, I, these are basically the colours I'm using. There's not one chestnut colour in there really. Well, probably the terracotta is closest. <clears throat> I'm generally using the um, burnt ochre and the terracotta for the background with a bit of the yellow ochre. Um, and then we've got a few greys that we're including. I need to go back over the eye because it's not dark enough. It needs to be much darker and richer than that, but I'm going to do that later. So I've used the Tombow rubber. It needs cleaning off a bit. Just very lightly to lighten up certain bits. It's very good for the wrinkles and creases. Got some up there too. out so so basically the rest of this is just building up the colors exactly as we've done for the face okay I'm hoping that you can see here the difference between this area which I've worked really hard on building up the layers and then and this area here I haven't finished the muzzle yet um, gradually as you get towards this part the neck you can see that there are less layers I've just there's only two or three layers down there I've probably got about six or seven layers at least on this area here maybe more I don't want to overdo it. Um, I am going to go back to the eye because that needs to be darker and obviously all this needs to be worked on. But um, this is starting to look better here. Um, at the moment, I'm going to be working on the muzzle just to show you how to build up the layers and make that look realistic. I hope you can see how um, using the yellow with the um, light yellow ochre, as I said, um, if you bring that down here, you can see it sort of blends into where the muzzle is, and the muzzle is quite grey. I'm going to make that greyer, so um, hopefully you can see that. 
Okay, so for the muzzle, I'm using cold grey six um, to put in the darker areas. It's still not dark enough. I will have to put in another darker colour over the top. I may use a bit of the dark sepia in a minute. But it's good for blending in the the outside of the muzzle. Yeah, I think the muzzle's gone a bit too yellowy brown, so we're we're using the cold grey colours to try and compensate for that a bit. Um, the horse has something coming out of its nostril, which I'm not going to include because it's just easier not to. Okay, so it's starting to get in the darker areas, look a bit more muzzle-like. Um, There's a very dark bit down by the actual end of the horse's nose. And the end of this nostril is quite dark. And also this area in here, but I'm not going to do that yet because I want to really use black on that bit, I think. So... using the dark sepia around the top of the horse's nose here is quite sort of browny. It's just to build, about building up the layers. <coughs> so I'm going to add a bit of black in. <coughs> so we're adding black in here to really get the depth in there. This is inside the horse's nostril, really. It's really quite dark in there. But you don't want just black lines. You've got to blend that black into the greys so it looks as if it's all part of it. Circular motions or strokes are, are quite good for that sort of thing. So, might need to press a little bit harder, not too hard though. Inside the nose there is actually almost bluey. So I'm going to leave that bit for now. Get some darker colour here. So almost the greys are just there to give it a platform for the black. So 
so that you can put the black in but not too obviously it's not too black so that it blends in a bit more I love horses' mouths. They almost look as if they're sort of smiling, don't they? They have a smiley face. So round here is very black. So on those bits you can use the cold grey 6 again, because it's not quite as black as the black. It's almost a sort of purpley colour actually, the nose, I might add in a bit of some of the luminance colours because they have sort of purpley greys. You could call this cheating but one thing that I like to do is I like to put the horse picture or whatever picture I'm drawing on top of my drawing and see if things are in the right place. A bit like one of those flip books. And I can see from doing that, that that nostril is too far up. And the mouth, I don't know if you can see it, the mouth doesn't go far enough up. So I'll try that again. Right, so I have a colour here. It's a luminance colour. And it is... It's really difficult to read. Um, I can't really hold it in the right place. It is called Violet Grey. Okay, so I'm thinking of a little bit more colour into it, putting a bit of violet colour in, just to make it work a bit more with the colour of the, of the actual muzzle, because it's not just black. Nothing's just black generally you generally have some other colors mixed in with it i mean obviously there is black but often black has blue mixed with it so i'm going to put a layer of this violet gray down the only thing i don't like about the luminance is they tend to sort of sit on top of the grain of the paper i like the polys polychromous because they go into the paper a lot more that's just my opinion okay so you can see it's a sort of pinky grey almost I don't want it to get too pinky I want it to be a bluey colour but as a base it's quite good colour so we'll put around here I'm still building up all these colours. It's still quite grey. The actual nose on the horse, as you could see from the photo, was quite dark. Well, actually, that doesn't show it very well. This is better. You can see it on my iPad. You can actually see how dark that is and how dark I've got to get mine to be. turning it off because I keep coughing because the fan here, the fan heater is really annoying. 
actually this is quite a good color <clears throat> Payne's gray is a very dark gray but it's quite a bluey gray as well so that will work quite well actually now the muzzle has lots of wrinkles and things all over it so he's got Got sort of creases around the edge of the mouth. It's looking as if he's got stitches now. But don't worry. It won't look like that at the end. I hope. Right, so a lot darker down here. If we'd drawn it a bit bigger, we could have got a lot more detail in sort of little hairs on his chin and all those sort of things. But we're just basically looking for the tones here at the moment. So this is quite a lot darker down here. Afterwards, we can go in with the slice tool. It's difficult to use on this sort of Fabriano paper. You've got to build up lots of layers for it to work. You need lots of pencil layers because you can't pull off paper. You, you need to pull off the pigment only. But just a little bit. Hopefully you can put in, I can put in some of the um, detail little hairy chin and things I'll see let's find my slice tool so I don't know if you can see but you can just put in little little lines he has got a hairy chin so we'll have to put that in later you can't really see much there but so for example if I'm doing a bit of this I can scrape bits off using the slice tool and all I'm doing is scraping off the actual pigment so if you do a bit that you don't want so here for example I want it to be quite light I can use this tool to scrape off pigment or here where I've put in this these creases they're a bit a bit too dark so I'm gonna scrape bits off But you can only do that if there's pigment already there. So you've got to have a few layers underneath to be able to do that. So we'll probably come in a bit later with a slice tool. Try out a few ideas. So down here where the nose is. Now I haven't got the white on there yet for the nose. So I'm not going to use that yet because you need something there for it to scrape off. So 
keep going on this area here. Okay, so the, the purple didn't work, the pinky colour didn't work very well, so I'm now going to add a little bit of bluey colours. This is Delft Blue. That's right, it's a sort of purpley blue. And I'm only going to add it lightly. But I just want the nose to be a little bit more bluey than greeny. might look a bit purple but it'll be okay I promise you can use any sort of blue really I just want to add a little bit into it sort of darkens up areas without making them too black This area here needs to be a bit darker. So works quite well for shadows. So if you add a bit of blue in, so this here is a darker shadow than I've got at the moment. Okay, I don't want to get too carried away because it's getting a bit of a purple nose now. So I'm going <coughs> to... Sharpen the paint grey and go back to working on that. So I'm going to work on this area here. Right, I'm going to use the Payne's grey a bit more to get some of the shadows and in so we've got areas where it gets quite sort of gray around the end of this muzzle It doesn't matter too much. I can take some of it out. It's still a bit purpley here. I need it to be sort of a bit dark around here. And definitely a bit darker in here. here. I may use a bit of black just to make those darker areas very dark. Just need to get a bit of texture in. Remember to follow the line of the 
fur or hair if there is any I mean like up here this bit here has a lot of grayer bits so you can use a pencil to just introduce those a bit what we're, what we're looking for here is to try and get this muzzle feeling all velvety and soft because that's what horses muzzles are like well apart from the uh, little hairs that stick out which are a bit sharp and spiky so we're going to make that a bit darker up there darker in here the polychromous black isn't as good this is a, a museum aquarelle by Karen Dash and the black and the white are very good so I'm just going to get a bit more of the shading in around here Try to make it look a bit as if it's under his chin. Yeah, I don't want it to go too black. I want a bit of red in there too. But under here and here. For that with a bit of red as well but it does make it look as if it's more softer right so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to darken that up a bit and then I may use the Tombow to try and <clears throat> let's see about that so you can take out some of the pigment I hope this is in focus because it keeps going out of focus like we did with the veins earlier you can take out some of the pigment using the Tombow eraser helps it look a bit more velvety and then this area here you can smooth it off Use it to put a bit of a highlight in. There's a highlight there as well. And there. And down here it's a bit of a highlight. Some of these bits aren't grey enough. It also is quite useful for blending the colours in. So if you've got a bit of an edge that you don't want. There. There's also the slice tool to take out where you don't want it so I've got quite a bit here that's
we'll go over this bit with white. <clears throat> this bit here needs a bit of lightening. So you can scratch or rub the lighter areas in, which works quite well. The only thing you've got to remember is if you've used slice tool, if you then want to draw over the top of it with another colour, it will. Show the lines where you've scratched it. So generally, don't don't use it until it's the last bit you're doing. So again, if you've got bits of pigment that you want to take out. in certain areas it's quite good for that there is another one this is um i can't remember the name of it i'll put it in the uh, details but this is i think it's the slice craft knife and i also have this one which is a oh you can't see it a different slice which has I got a slightly rounder thicker sort of blade so if you want to use it for say fur or hair it's quite good for lightening areas if you if you want them lightened or putting in texture if you want texture sometimes so say this bit above the eye here need that lightening a bit you can normally scratch off the pigment to lighten it up a bit okay so I'm using the slice knife just to get a bit of pigment off up here because there's a bit too much and to get a bit of texture in oh <laughs> that's handy you can't see what I'm doing <laughs> Well, you can. Um, so a bit down here. Just some areas I can see that it's a bit too dark and it needs a bit of the pigment, pigment removed. Just a bit. You can always go over it again. Just lightening up some of the areas.
Remember to do it the way that the hair or fur goes. So that's pretty much the face done. Got a little bit of scratching away here to do because I went a bit too far with the nostril. So the good thing is that if you put something down where you don't want it to be, you can always scrape it off again. Well, you can't always. Sometimes you can't scrape it off because it's too um, compressed, the pigment. So I think that's a bit better. Right, so I'm going to go back over that with a bit of um, the Payne's Grey again just to put some of that back in where I want the, the darker areas to be. Okay. Hey. 